three, two. Good afternoon. I now call to order the meeting of the Equity Committee for Thursday, October 21st, 2021. Baltimore County Public Schools and offices will continue to be closed to the public and non-essential personnel in order to maintain the health and safety of our students and staff. In accordance with the Board of Education's amended resolution approved at the October 13th, 2020 board meeting, in the event of a medical or health emergency related to COVID, the board chair, in consultation with the vice chair and the superintendent, may declare that a board meeting or a board committee meeting be held remotely in its entirety without the physical presence of board members or in a hybrid manner with only some individual board members participating remotely. Subject to the establishment of a mechanism that would allow each board member the opportunity to fully participate in the meeting despite not being physically present and that would allow the public to also remotely attend those portions of the meeting that are open pursuant to the Maryland Open Meetings Act by being able to listen and or view those portions of the meeting. As a result, today's equity committee is being held virtually and broadcasted through live stream on the BCPS website. In order to efficiently conduct this meeting, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board members will say their names before making and seconding a motion as applicable, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Ms. Fast, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Ms. Scott. Present. Ms. Mack. Present. Ms. Pastor. Present. Mr. Thomas. Present. Thank you. Ms. Fast, oh, sorry, I was on mute. Ms. Fast, please call the roll of staff members participating in today's meeting. Dr. Yarbrough? Present. Dr. McComas? Present. Mr. Handy? Present. Thank you. And um, are, are there, um, I'd like to call and note the names of any staff members participating who we didn't call? I don't see any other staff members, uh, Ms. Scott. Okay, and are there any uh, board members who are in attendance as well? I don't believe so, no. Great, thank you. Come. All right, so the first item is um, a review and uh, approval of the equity equality, equity equality resolution graphic. And for that, let's see, is that Mr. Handy? Yes, ma'am, thank you, Ms. Scott. Great, thank you. Yep. So um, I believe um, all committee members do have the graphic uh, in the materials for the meeting. Did you all receive the graphic? I know we had emailed it earlier um, and that was a couple weeks ago. OK, so it looks like. Uh, Mr. Thomas is giving a thumbs up. OK, so really what we wanted to do, um, remember the last time we came together um, as a committee, uh, we talked about the graphic. We had some ideas. Um, I had a to do item to go work with our graphics uh, department and realize, if you will, actualize what you all are given for feedback. And now we have a graphic that, um, you know, would like you all to look at. And if you are approving what we have, we can move forward with um, your intentions to use that graphic. So just wanted to open up the floor for any any discussion or feedback on the on the graphic. So. Um, I can start and if um, board members, if you have questions, please put them in the in the chat your name um, so I can call on you. But I think I said this last time. Um, I like how it looks. I like it together mm -hmm. like that. And I wanted to know because I didn't see the dimensions on here. Did we say that this would be because I believe we asked if it could be um, horizontal or vertical and I wanted to know. Um, the dimensions of how big is it? Is it going to be like poster size? Because we said it would be at the front of our schools. Um, uh, visually, how would that look on the on the wall? Sure. So, Ms. Scott, um, when I was talking to our, our graphics folks, I did mention just like you said, we wanted a poster that would go in a you know school lobby. So I'm sure we can size it um, for that purpose, and we can get an actual dimensions um, before you know you you as a committee confirm whether you want to go forward. Um, as far as the orientation. The uh, horizontal orientation just did not work. 
um, that was the feedback I received from the graphic designer. So um, that's why um, I've only presented you all with a uh, vertical orientation, but the, the dimensions we certainly, I'm pretty sure we can meet whatever dimensions you are looking for. Okay, yeah, I like the vertical because it seems like it's large enough and then also it's easy to read. And um, I guess with the dimensions, would it change different sizes at different schools or would it be the same size at every school is what we were thinking? So my, my thoughts were a standard size for each school. Uh, I don't know if anyone has any, any different thoughts. I did put in the chat. Oh. I'm sorry. There are oh, two options of world. common sizes that are available to us: 11 by 14 and 12 by 18. Those so are that's two like standard poster sizes. size. Yes. Okay. But not a gigantic poster. It's a nice size that you. <laughs> yes. Yes, Mr. Thomas. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Great. OK, thank you. Um, it looks like there's a question from Mr. Thomas. Uh, yes, thank you, Ms. Scott. Uh, I had sent an email out a few weeks ago asking if it would be possible to maybe label the icons or have some label for the like, Apple icons somewhere on the bottom, like it could be on a parentheses at the very bottom, like icons, and they kind of explain what each one is. Just because I, I think some of them are very honest, like the diploma, we know that would be like getting a education or a graduation. Um, the money sign would obviously be like financial equity, but I think some of the uh, like icons could be a little confusing and for if this is going in all of our schools, maybe some elementary school students wouldn't understand uh, what the icons mean. Uh, and I think it would be uh, great if we could point them out specifically, like what kind of commitments we have to offering to all of our students. Um, so is there a possibility that we could maybe provide a label to the icons somewhere on the resolution? So uh, I guess I'm a, a bit confused. Um, Sorry, go ahead. No, please, please, Miss Scott. Yeah, I'm just a bit confused because you're saying the icons, like if you're saying like the dollar sign, you're saying like to have a word next to it that would say like dollar sign. No, it doesn't have to be a word next to it. It could be on the very like bottom of the like uh, the the graphic itself, like in parentheses, something that explains what the icons represent. Like it could be from order from left to right, like how you see a caption of a picture, like left to right on the left on the tree branch on the left side, you could say like financial equity or like uh, the maybe the hands together clasping together means like a partnership or communicate or collaboration and like kind of providing a word for what each of those icons represent uh, so that it's understandable what kind of equitable promises or we have for our students. Um, did any staff have any response? I know I, I to me that seems like that could be kind of busy. That seems like a lot because it's already a lot of words. And wordsmithing it more, adding more definitions. It sounds like you're saying like a Rubik's, like a symbol and then like a word next to it, like at the bottom. And I, I don't know. Um, most people don't read that much. Um, and I think like the visual really says a lot and then the wording below says a lot and it makes it easier to read. I think the more that we add to try to um, figure out may dilute the message. Yeah. So Ms. Scott, um, I agree. I know you posed a question to staff um, and Mr. Thomas, thank you for, I know there were some dialogue via email on this earlier. The one point though that you made this evening was for the sake of our elementary students. Um, so what I would propose is we keep the graphic as is, and I'd be glad to take the lead on this and come up with some discrete um, teaching and learning materials so that we can actually directly instruct students in our classrooms about this graphic and thus our 0100 policy. So I think it's a very um, good learning opportunity because I agree. I think we, we get so used to looking at these graphic representations, just like you went through, right? You knew what these symbols meant. However, I agree. I think some of our youngest stakeholders May, may not get it. And um, I do think it's a, a powerful opportunity to make sure they understand what we're what we're um, messaging with the graphics. So um, I like to keep the graphic nice and clean like Ms. Scott talked about. And then as Mr. Thomas had recommended, you know, maybe come up with some 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 materials where we can use to, to teach students directly about what we're doing here. Ms. Scott, can, may I jump in on that? <clears throat> Ms. Scott. Mm -hmm. 
I'm sorry, I was on mute. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, I think it's, uh, and I think Mr. Handy is alluding to this. It's such a teachable moment to have the symbols there and for our elementary students particularly to take looks at a look at words. It's a way of having a discussion around this, to look at a word, look at a, a dollar or the word dollar or the word money or the word sense or whatever, and what symbol do you see or the word computer or whatever. So that it, it, it just lends itself to a, a different level of discussion and instruction. I think if you keep the symbols, uh, but in the discussion of it, maybe infuse the words and have a discussion around that. A teachable moment, please. <laughs> I think that's a, a, a teachable moment um, of what you all were saying and what Mr. Thomas um, uh, was was requesting. And, and like you're saying, maybe having something to go along with it to teach the children uh, what it means and, and what it is in, in elementary school. I just I think that adding more words to it, though, could um, I, I like the way it looks now because it's, it's a great visual. It's clean and then it has the wording below it. Ms. Mack, you said you have a 12 by 18 frame <laughs> on your wall. <laughs> I do. If you would like me to carry my laptop over there to see it. Oh, that'd be awesome. OK, here we go. I always like visuals. That, wait a minute. Hold on. The top thing is 12 by 18. OK. The black, not the inside white, but the black. The black. Got it. Okay, that gives me an idea of the size. Thank you. Thank you for that, Ms. Mack. Did anyone else have any? Um, I mean, that to me seems like a, a, a good size and everything. So I don't um, have any issues with going ahead forward with um, um, with approving this. Um, did anyone else have any questions? Can I just get a clarification on Mr. Thomas's or are we going to see what it looks like with words or we're not considering the words at all? My understanding that Mr. Handy um, was going to have something that would accompany um, this for the elementary schools that would explain what those symbols meant. And I guess sort of like maybe a definition dictionary or something um, and use that as a teaching tool to, to teach children about equity and equality. Is that a correct assessment, Mr. Handy? Yes, Ms. Scott. And that tool would be mounted right next to the 12 by 18 poster? I was so, thinking, oh, sorry, go ahead. Well, I'm sorry, so Ms. Scott, as you just described, I was actually thinking a couple of opportunities. One, like Ms. Ms. Mack just mentioned, something that was right there near the poster, uh, maybe something laminated that could be kept in, in the front office or near that poster. So maybe for any stakeholder who's you know who's looking at it and wanting some clarity, and then also um, I, I do like the idea of some a distinct lesson for students, really on policy zero one hundred, um, and how this graphic you know being a representation of that, and what it means. Great. Did you have any other suggestions or questions, Ms. Matt? No, thank you. I just wanted a clarification. Okay. Great. Thank you then. Um, so I guess it looks like we have consensus. Is everyone fine with with that process is going forward um, how it is and then having the um, lesson plan and then also having um, a definition of what it is next to it? I yes, guess I should ask if there are any objections rather. <laughs> I have a question before we uh, go forward. Yes. Um, so when these symbols, the specific symbols were chosen, uh, I, I just wanted to know like why were these specific symbols chosen? And is there an underlying meaning behind each of these symbols, or were they just kind of chosen to represent, an, you know, equitable or equal equal distribution of resources? Yes, Mr. Thomas, I can share that using uh, policy 0100, our graphic designer used that when he went searching for different symbols that had some of those universal meetings. Okay, thank you. And there are no objections from me, Ms. Scott. Any other questions? Great. All right, thank you all so much for that. That was, I think, a great discussion, Ian. I'm very happy with the visual. Um, 
Uh, Mr. Handy, could you tell us what the next steps would be? I... Yes, so um, I'll go back timeline. to the timeline. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'll go back to the graphic designer. Um, we do have um, the graphic we want. We have the image. We also have the size that you all have agreed upon. Um, so I want to lead with that. I think we can produce that uh, quite readily. So um, depending on when he can produce it, and I'm sure he'll just produce a, an electronic file and then working with our copy print uh, team, we can get those produced and I'll um, find out what the timeline is and then get back to the committee uh, with that timeline so we know what to expect. Um, I do know they can turn items around like within a week sometimes. They're, they're very uh, expeditious and efficient in their operation. So I'm thinking we could have this up. It'd be great to have it up for American Education Week. So I think that would be a, a, a good goal um, to have that up in November. Okay, that would be a great goal, <laughs> ambitious goal. <laughs> okay. Would, would that suit your timeline, Ms. Scott, for you and the other committee members? Well, that would for me, that, that would be awesome. I, I was not even thinking, I was thinking it would take longer, but yes, if it could be up by American Education Week in November, that would be excellent. Okay. I will work towards that. Yep, perfect. Ms. Scott, please excuse me, it's Sarah. Just to clarify, do we need to vote on this item to move forward? We could do a vote, yeah, just to, um, I was doing consensus, of but um, we should probably, we could do a vote. So um, uh, do I have a motion to um, move forward with the equity resolution next steps? So, so move, Ms. Pastua. There a second? Second, Thomas. May we take a roll call vote, Ms. Fass? Yes, thank you. Ms. Scott? Yes. Ms. Mack? Yes. Ms. Pastor? Yes. And Mr. Thomas? Yes. Thank you. The motion carries, and thank you for that, Ms. Fass. Perfect. Okay, and then the next. Item to review. The next, um, oops. Next, the committee will review the questions from the May um, equity lens. And um, I believe there's a graphics for that where we'll discuss and apply the equity lens. Is that again, you, Mr. Handy? Yes, Ms. Scott. Mm -hmm. So, um, Really, we have, um, as you mentioned, we have the equity questions from May, uh, Maryland Association for Boards of Education. Um, that should be in your packet as well. Um, I do have um, on the, really the sole slide, other than this title slide, I have some, what we call our equity lens questions that we'll use internally. Um, I really like Mabe's questions because they're, they're very broad and comprehensive. So um, let's start with the questions that you, we, we try to use within BCPS when uh, we're making decisions in meetings. So um, five questions, you'll see there's also five in the MAPES questions. And I know you all as a committee looked at these, um, I wanna say it was in May, so it's, I'm somewhat of a review. Um, the first question we ask, uh, you know, who, and when we say who, we talk, we're talking about what student group or groups, or, you know, could be what individual student, but who is being impacted by this decision? So all the decisions that are being made in the various meetings that we conduct, um, we want to keep in mind who's being impacted. Second question, um, does this decision ignore existing disparities or produce unintended consequences? And, you know, again, we, we know that these disparities exist. Um, it's actually, you know, in, in the, our charge as a school system, you know, raise the bar, close the gaps, prepare for the future. So we're talking about closing the gaps. Uh, we know they exist when we make decisions. Are those decisions disrupting those gaps? Are they mitigating disparities or are we perpetuating those um, or widening those gaps? Third question, um, have I obtained multiple perspectives? And that's when, you know, as a committee, you know, there's no single person on this committee. You, you make sure you bring in, you know, a manageable number of, of perspectives with the membership of the committee. Um, and you want perspectives that, like I want perspectives that differ from mine. Um, and that's how, you know, um, really I, I can, challenge in a healthy way decisions I'm making and also make sure I grow and, and learning about um, a perspective that I might not have. Fourth question, um, have I worked to remove barriers? Um, again, we know um, that there are barriers to access for students for various reasons. Um, 
and what have we done uh, to remove those barriers? Um, have we worked to remove the barriers or are we just um, sometimes we call it, you know, admiring the problem. So we, we don't want to do that. We want to push through. And then number five, um, if I can't remove the barriers, what is my plan to mitigate impact? So in general, what we're looking at is, is having an awareness around our decision making um, as it relates to racial equity within um, within our school system. So that's what um, we've developed in house, if you will. Um, like I said, in your packet, you have um, some of the questions from Mabe. Um, if you notice, uh, like I said, the Mabe questions are very similar to these. Um, they're a little, they can be broad because they can talk about policy. So when I think about um, you all as, as Board of Education members and the fact that you all do uh, determine policy, the, the influence you have on policy, we can talk about at the policy level, um, but you also notice you talk about programs and practices and decisions. So it really can be at the level at which you all operate um, at that policy level, or it can go right down to, say, a classroom teacher making a decision in their classroom. So um, that's why I really like the MAVE questions, but I also wanted to share uh, these questions as a review because we, we do use these in many proceedings within BCPS. Um, so just want to open it up for questions if anyone does have any questions or comments on uh, these questions in particular, and we can also discuss the uh, MAVE questions if you like. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, I guess my question would be is um, this is basically you're sharing with us the which I've seen the MAVE equity um, lens tool and you were sharing with us how as a system um, it's used to be applied or it is applied to decisions, but also how we can use it as board members when we work on policies and various things. Yeah. Um, okay. Great. Yeah, no, that was self-explanatory. That was very good. Um, did any other board members have any questions about the tools or how they're used or anything? Well, I have a question about these, about these questions. Um, and the last thing that Mr. Handy said, um, asked or asked whether we're using this um, board purposes or does it actually even move into schools? Is that what you not said? Is that what you said, Mr. Handy? Or not? Uh, essentially, Ms. Pastor, I just wanted to imply that really no matter what role an individual plays within our system, um, I believe these questions are accessible to to that person for making decisions, um, making decisions in which they applied an equity lens. So okay, yes, I'd so, say. So my question then is, um, what is our purpose here? What is yes. the purpose? Is our purpose just to do this for the board? Is our purpose to do it so it does what you just said to impact? If we're the equity committee. So I'll make a statement now. My position or thought would be that we are using these for all departments right into the school. How and because that's the only way really that we know it's it has the potential to impact the entire system and they certainly go with the poster. So we're going to put the poster up. What would go with this would be how we think every day. When we come in, we walk in the office, when the children walk into the classes, when the teachers walk into the teacher's room, when you go into your office, et cetera. So that's how I see it being used. And I just don't remember in our previous discussions whether we had something very specific or some way very specific. specific. So I'm just making that as a statement and I guess a question. Had we already decided how we were using these? Um, as far as my recollection, my understanding was that we should be using these with everything that we do. Um, every time we look at any policy, when you look at curriculum, um, when you're deciding like what, uh, uh, like for instance, the poster, what what we just reviewed, applying it to that, what groups of students will be impacted by our decision to have it at every school? What uh, does this discussion ignore exist, existing disparities or produce unintended consequences? And that's what we went about speaking about and how um, Mr. Thomas was saying, you know, making sure that you have some a, a wording rubrics with the symbols so that, you know, younger children can see it. Um, 
Have I obtained multiple perspectives? That's why we have the committee where, where, we, where we talked about that. Have I worked to remove barriers? Um, and maybe someone reading it will have a barrier, will have a barrier removed when they see that because um, we're having both visual and words together. So hopefully that will help with any sort of um, learning differences. And if I can't remove those barriers, what is my plan to mitigate the impact? And so if someone like Mr. Thomas in elementary school can't visualize or understand what the symbols are, we have a word rubric that can help them. And then also like Mr. Handy said, having a lesson plan to go with it. So then that way we're addressing each of those five points. So, okay, so am I, I think I'm hearing you say, what I, I think, what I say is my preference because we don't make the word, we don't do the word rubric, we don't put the words up, the school house people do that. So uh, we do do policy. So what you just described is a whole system connected to this. So wherever you are in the system, when you're doing anything mm -hmm. or processing, you are going to use this. So that's my suggestion. I think that's what I'm hearing you say. That that's is correct. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Okay, thank you. Yep. And um, it looks like there's a question for Mr. Thomas. Yes, thank you. Um, in reviewing these questions, and I uh, this is kind of taking a step away from this agenda point, Ms. Scott, but I, I did want to ask this. Uh, looking at the question, how have I worked to remove barriers? I was looking back to the resolution. And I had just thought, you know, we haven't really removed barriers for our English learning language students. Maybe we should have translations for the resolution uh, in our schoolhouse. Maybe we have a Spanish uh, translation that's present since we have a lot of, uh, we have a very large Hispanic population that does speak Spanish pr predominantly. So um, I, I was applying these questions and I know this isn't the agenda point to address that, but I, since that was something we just talked about, I wanted to state that. Thank you. Thank you. That's a, um, I think a good point having it in English and then maybe if there is an, another dominant language at the school, Spanish, then we also have it um, in, in that as well. So um, yeah, I think that is that is a good point. And um, oh, and Dr. Yarborough said we can have it translated. That's excellent. So that means we can have it translated, I guess, into any language. So that's that's wonderful. Um, thank you for you both for that. And I would also say my my question, um, I have another one follow up and I don't know if we're talking about this a little bit later, um, but as it relates to our um, equity advisory council, um, you know, where it's saying, you know, have we worked to remove the barriers? I think that's an example of us working to remove the barrier of, of, of um, uh, hearing people feeling maybe that they're not being heard and that their equity concerns um, uh, are not being addressed. So we're having the council created to remove that barrier. And then also that's our plan to mitigate um, the impact which has happened and hopefully reduce um, different sort of um, disparities that, that have been going on to actually hear from um, our community um, and apply it with an equitable lens. So um, would that be a correct assessment, um, Mr. Handy? Yes. Yes, indeed, Ms. Scott. And I will say, um, and I, I do not have the slide with the MAPE questions. Um, I'm actually going to quickly refer to them. That last point you made about the advisory, um, if we look at the MAPE questions, they actually have question three is, how have you, how have you intentionally involved stakeholders mm -hmm. who are also members of the communities affected by this policy program, practice, decision, or action? So. Um, certainly direct connection between applying the equity lens and like you all have done, you know, stood up this advisory committee or um, advisory council, I think is what we're calling it, but absolutely. Mm -hmm. Great. And Ms. Scott, may I um, also, I wanted to follow up on Ms. Pastor's point, if I may. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. um, so Ms. Pastor, if I understand what you were talking about too, you know, we brought this to you all as a committee and as board members. And if I understood your your point about, you know, this should really um, be used throughout our school system. So, you know, there is a process where I can, you know, bring this through uh, levels of leadership and, you know, coming out of this committee, you know, really make this more of a practice, if you will, or, or certainly make it, I would say, you know, heighten the visibility, the awareness, the, the expectation, um, if that's what it, it ends up being um, from our leadership. 
on actually using this tool. So um, thank you for that. I say in that same line, the main point about um, stakeholders and communities, I would suggest that that be specifically added to this, unless we only wanted five items or, and, or to reword it. I think that point in our guiding questions, have we blah, 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 because all of these are our checkoff points. And if it's going to impact the whole system, it then says, and you know, I always come back to blueprint so that everybody is going to have to hold on to that so that they know um, in blueprint, you're going to have to have a stakeholder component. Mm -hmm. And so your question, that question, if you have six of these questions, the one that we pull from May, that this last one from Maine, then administrators are asking themselves as we are moving forward and working with our students and our teachers, blah, 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 have we involved? So there it is again. Mm -hmm. And the same as I look at Dr. Yarbrough and she's putting out um, instructional directions as we are talking about in central office, what, what good mm -hmm. curriculum looks like and roll out asking that question, how have or are we including stakeholders? So throughout the system, we are doing that as well. So on every level, you're seeing that as well. But I would like to see that specific point put in this list. Ms. Pastor, to your point, number three is a natural location where we can include ah, the okay. specific stakeholders. OK, yes. Or just multiple perspectives. OK, yeah, absolutely. Yes. So we know that it's in within the system and outside the system as well. Thank you. Yes, that would be perfect. And if I could ask um, Dr. Yarbrough and Mr. Handy, is this going to be distributed around or what will, um, or is this just for our conversation? What will, where will this document live? So currently it's a part of the equity training that takes place and the lens that is used and equity teams use it. But I think what I heard um, based on this recommendation is we'll take it through our internal structures, including the academic team meeting, the business team meeting, mm -hmm. and take it to cabinet so that we can make it more widely spread and everyone can have access to it um, to utilize it on a regular basis when making decisions that impact our students. I think that'd be excellent. Um, and I'd also ask, because we did touch on the Equity Council, um, as a, and it, you're right, it um, had the intentionally involved stakeholders. Um, have we already set up a date and everything for our first council meeting? I know there was some, um, uh, we had spoken about it before, and so I just wanted to see, was that something we would be able to do in November as well? Dr. Yarbrough, would you like me to respond? Sure, you can share the uh, proposed November dates that we're working with Ms. Gover on, absolutely. Yes, okay, so uh, Ms. Scott, based on your timeline, we did have some dates and I will, if you give me just a minute, I will share those. Okay. Uh, just a minute. All right, so um, had recommended some dates. Um, so if we can start um, at 4.30, or later, um, November 1st or 8th. And then if we could start at 4 p.m. or later, uh, November 2nd, 3rd, 4th, or 10th. Okay. And looking to, like you said, avoid full board meetings and committee meetings, which um, was your request, I believe. And then, um, but again, if, if you wanted to start earlier in the day, um, you know, I, we can, we can, work towards that as well. And I think um, then I'd like, uh, you know, if board members have any um, feedback or anything. I was thinking after school or, or later, um, maybe, uh, after people get off of um, work or because the stakeholders are community members um, so that we could make sure that um, we had ample participation. So does anybody else have any feel one way or another or want to weigh in? Or would you all prefer uh, an earlier start time? Um, I, I think that in order to encourage more students to maybe get involved, that a later start time 
might be better due to athletics and um, due to extra activities that might be occurring after school. Uh, but then I also think of student transportation mm -hmm. and how difficult that can be at times. And so if it was in a school, uh, then students of that if our oh their virtual meetings never mind for the yeah meeting. so so then I think the later they would start would be the better yeah I was just thinking it would probably be okay all right well thank you for that yeah and then we'll just uh, wait to hear back with the date that would be excellent and then um uh then we'll just um take it from there perfect okay. Ms. Scott, just want just mm -hmm. make sure I'm, I'm clear. So do you, do you all want to work as a committee to determine the date that works best for you all? And then I can start to um, invite the council members or how would how would you like to proceed, I guess, in regards to the date? Um, what date works well for everyone? I was going to see maybe if um, uh, if if Tracy wanted to do a doodle poll poll or if people already know now. Or did because I know we just got the dates. Did um were members ready to decide now? Um, because I would say I'm ready. That, to, I can decide now. Oh, okay, perfect. What date works for you? Um, the dates that work best for me would be the third, the fourth, or um, or the tenth. The third, the fourth, or the tenth. I would say the 10th only because we're getting ready. This, isn't this Thursday? Yes, this is Thursday. So we are in next week is the end of the of the week. And so if it's like the first or whatever, the first week of November, we're actually only giving people one week to know that we're doing this, when we're doing it, et cetera. And I think that people should have at least two weeks. So I go for the 10th. I could do the third or the fourth. Lisa? I can only do the 10th. Um, I'm actually away. So, okay. um, but I mean, obviously use a consensus. Mm hmm. See, um, I guess we have a board meeting. Um, let's see. The board meeting is on the 9th. On the 9th. That's what I'm thinking is the day before. <laughs> and so the 10th to turn around and have another meeting. Was there a number, a date after the 10th? I mean, I, I, I can come if, if I had to on the 3rd or the 4th, but this is not just about us coming. We no, I know, but it's it is two weeks though. If you if we do the fourth, I mean, you have um, that is two weeks because today is the twenty first. Okay, but the notice hasn't gone out. Yeah, but if it if it went out like uh, on the twenty fifth, that would be um, that would be. I mean, to me, that would that would be more than a, an, enough time. Any other? Miss Scott. Uh, yes. Is, uh, I also I, I understand Ms. Pastor saying about the notice um, and I think that uh, previous meetings we do give at least two weeks notice and I do think the third and the fourth is kind of cutting short. Is the 10th unnegotiable for, for your schedule, Ms. Ms. Scott? Um, no, it's let me see. Um, I just try to stay away uh, from having, you know, because you're asking the same people a lot of the same stakeholders who will probably come and and speak at the board meetings then to turn around and come to a council so i was just trying to give some breathing room in between well i was thinking about that except we don't have a whole a whole lot i would love to see more stakeholders at the board meeting than we actually see but i don't want anyone to not come to one because they were late at the other so that's just that's just my thing but if if um. I, um, is there a date I asked and I don't think I got an answer. Is there a date after the 10th that was listed? The I still want it to be done well and we just get, as Ms. Scott just said, that we get the most people there. So Ms. Scott, if I, I, I may. The third of, hmm? oh, I'm sorry, I just wanted to call attention to Dottie Yarbrough. So to answer the question, yes. The only reason I stopped at the 10th is because I was operating off of the early November. So Please, if, if, if going out further is the consensus, so Dr. Yarbrough did um, put some dates in the chat. 16th or 17th. 
the 16th or 17th of November. Um, on the 16th, there is an audit committee meeting. and the 17th, there is a budget committee meeting. Um, All right. I don't Can know I ask this is. question? How long, when do you think the the notice would go out to these stakeholders? It can go out as early as tomorrow. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if it goes out tomorrow, and then are we requesting that they respond and let us know that they will be coming? Um, so we'll know what, who to expect. I guess if it goes out tomorrow, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Twenty seconds. Then you do have that it. That is two weeks. Fourth, so it would be if it goes out tomorrow, it would be two weeks for the fourth. Okay. I don't have an objection to that. I have a question. Yes, um, Mr. Thomas. Is it necessary for us to require that our stakeholders respond saying that they will attend? I, I think that if we kind of keep it open ended where anyone could attend the meeting, then it might encourage more people to um, attend the it's event. Our, our um, council is is not, um, it's not where just anybody is. It, it's a um, creative, oh. it's our stakeholders, our stakeholder group. That's what it's based I off see. of. I see, never mind. So Thank you. they could um, then, that would give them time to either themselves attend or or have someone attend that would 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 speak um on the issues because um as we get closer uh the board meetings uh you know the budget is is coming up and everything like that and i feel that our stakeholders um would want to come in enough time because i know dr williams you know works on the budget we meet with him about it and then i believe it's finalized in december so we want them to have enough time to be able to give feedback and give information if they, that's what they so choose to come. And um, and that's an issue of equity that they feel um, should be focused on. So okay. I didn't want it to be, that was my other concern with having it later, if it would be later after things were already um, um, sort of uh, in motion, I want there to be enough time. Okay, then uh, I, I think that maybe November 4th, um, possibly at 6 p.m. would be a good time. Is that a possibility? Yeah. I guess we'd have to check with staff if that would be oh, even yes, that would yes be for possible. Me. Okay, and so then you all would just work with Tracy to set that up. Yes, we can follow yes. up with her tomorrow. Yeah. Great. November 4th, uh, 6 p.m. Perfect. Okay. And you want to run um, 90 minutes, Ms. Scott? Should we set it for? I think that would be good. Uh huh. Okay. Or 6 p.m. for 90 minutes, yes. Okay. Well, that's wonderful. I'm glad we um, were able to come to agreement. And Dr. Yarbrough or Mr. Handy, you're going to adjust the language in number three? Absolutely. Yes. Great. Thank you. So once the um, announcement is drafted, is that, um, that would be great. I guess then we'll, it'll go on the website and it'll go around for everyone to see. Yeah. That, great. Okay. okay. Now, Ms. Scott, may I ask one more question about yes. that meeting? All right, as you just explained to Mr. Um, Thomas, it, the, the folks are our stakeholders, um, and this is virtual, is that right? Correct. Okay, will there be an opportunity like what happens in other advisory meetings where people can listen in even if they are not going uh, not able to participate yes okay that's where we'll work with mr corns but it'd be like like um any any other meeting that we do where it's open they can listen in mm -hmm. you get that mr thomas so people the students and others will hear and that'll help some other community people who are not stakeholders to know that we're working on this and they can hear it. Thank you, Ms. Scott. Yeah. Yep, and give us. Yes, thank you, Ms. Pastor. Yep. And Ms. Scott. Excellent. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> All right. Um, was there anything else around this? Any other questions, Mr. Handy or Ms. Dr. Yarbrough? Did you have any other? Anything else around this? 
Um, not around the advisory for me, Ms. Scott, no. Great. Okay, and it looked like then the next item was um, discuss, um, or which we may have done, um, um, that we would, you know, look at the excerpt and apply the equity lens to various practices, decisions, and actions documented in the excerpt. That looks like we just did that and discuss how they applied or how we applied the equity lens. Um, so it sounds like we kind of did all that, unless there was something additional. There was, there was one other part and okay. Ms. Scott, and what and, and I've, I've got a thought on this. So for um, for the, the committee, there was an, uh, an article that I provided with an excerpt and I thought it'd be a good exercise for us to apply the MABE questions in particular as you read the excerpt. And I'm just thinking how I learn best and how I operate. And it might be a nice homework assignment. So I don't, I don't know if, if it's if it's uh, in line with where you all want to go, perhaps now that we've had a good discussion on the questions, maybe you take those questions, you take the excerpt and, um, you know, start to annotate. And the one way I would do it, as I went through that article, there's certain lines and there's several lines in that article that it's time to apply those questions, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. So when you're reading that, that when you read the article, you could just read through it or you could read mm -hmm. through it and apply that equity lens and you could stop and highlight and say, wait a minute, question two, three, and four apply to this statement. So that's something I would propose. I think it'll it'll serve as well as a committee. Um, however, I'm, I'm perhaps we don't do it here in, in the in the meeting. Perhaps it's something um, you know we could do offline and come back and discuss later. I think yeah. that would I think that would be good. Did, were there any um, questions or any comments anyone had did, um, on the article? Okay. No questions on the article, but just a comment agreeing with Mr. Handy that um, using this uh, fictitious school in Dayton, Ohio will mm -hmm. help us to um, operationalize these equity questions so that when we're looking at policies or we're looking at practices, we're able to apply them as well. So we're going to operation or the goal is to operationalize the, the equity lens. Yes. Okay. Oh, it looks like Ms. Mack um, has a question. May Mr. I, Ms. Scott? Have, mm -hmm. have the whole yes, email resent to me. Thank you. Yes, yes ma'am. You're welcome. Okay. And um, I see what you're saying. So, because uh, I was wondering when I was reading that and looking at that document, um, I thought it was a real school. I didn't know it was a fictitious one. So, but I see for it's for us to apply the equity lens and and how we how we um, do that. Yeah. Okay. So, Ms. Scott, if I may, and thank you, Ms. Mack. I think it's a good opportunity. I will resend to all um, committee members, and then I'll I'll give a couple examples. Um, you know, some statements that I annotated and the questions that I thought applied and that way, you know, just to share some of my thinking and I think that'll, you know, help bring us all into the into the mix. Yeah, I would appreciate a resend because I, I looked at it, but we've had so much discussion and things that have been changed. It would be nice if it's updated. Um, Thank you very much. Also, because I am clearly obsessive, compulsive and for good reason, about blueprint. I think that um, as we create or you create these documents that we always process what part of blueprint because our world must be attached to that now. And I'm looking at these questions. I mean, the questions really already go to where we're going. We just had in curriculum the discussion around community schools and we we, we know that our ultimate goal is that the benefits and the directions that we are going to see in our community schools will ultimately uh, be a part of all of our schools. That that's where we want to go. So as we're looking at this, and especially when we get our advisory group together, that people are always tying things back to that because mm -hmm. this is fabulous and a piece of what they need to be thinking about Dr. Wisted and friends as they're creating the plan that has to be submitted in June of 2022. Just thought I'd throw that out. 
Well, that's good. Thank you. Um, so it looks like now we're on next steps and follow up. Um, and um, yeah, what Ms. Pastor said was was good. And um, did anyone else have anything that um, they wanted to also speak about or any questions? I'm looking at the document in Board Docs. Is that the same one? I believe you uploaded it um, to Board Docs, Mr. Handy. Yes, yes, Ms. Okay. that's the same one. So um, certainly, you know, uh, committee members can get it there and then I, I still will follow up with the email um, just with some some examples from how I read the document as well. But those are the same documents, yes. OK, great. OK, um, and so for next steps, I wanted to, um, uh, I guess, sort of um, give some next steps or, or, or talk about some follow up and then also um, uh, hear from from others what they would like to see um, at our next um, meeting. But one of the things that I wanted to uh, know was you said you would be getting a, a, a timeline for us in regards to the poster. Um, you would also be getting for us a, uh, a printout of it. And I was going to ask, is that possible? I know you said November, not for it to necessarily go up, but like to have a copy of it um, that we could um, bring to the board meeting on November 9th or to show or that I could have a copy um, to show to the board because they're um, and I didn't know if, if something like like that would be. Let's see or when it would be when it would be available um, or if not, but just I guess so the timeline would help me to know, you know, when it would be available and, and when it's something um, that we could have a, a hard copy of. I, I just would like to see a hard copy of it. Ms. Scott, that's possible to have it um, available before that November board meeting. OK, great. Perfect. Thank you. I would like to see if you're saying you can have it before the board meeting. I think we need to have copies of it ready for our advisory people on the 4th. And it doesn't have to be, you know, like post or whatever, but Mr. Handy loves making little folders. And so in the little folder, we go way back. We go way back. I mean, working him over for many years now, about 20 yep. years. OK, so in his little folder, if they could just at least have a, a copied view of what that poster is going to look like, as well as these questions and anything we're generating mm -hmm. that our advisors get it on the fourth. So because it's going to be a, um, a, a team's meeting, it could be something electronic mm -hmm. that Yes. That we could shop. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He knows how to do those little electronic folders too. Don't play yeah. with him. He's a folder kind of man. Okay. <laughs> Great. So that's good. So, and then we'll also get the timeline. Then we'll have a copy. Yeah, I was thinking about having a, it. would be nice also to have a copy to give out um, so that the board members um, have that as well. And then. Um, uh, next steps would be um, we have our first council meeting. Uh, well, yeah, our, our equity council meeting coming up uh, a calendar because that would also be nice to be able to share with the um, stakeholders if we can uh, the future meetings This is going to be um, uh, uh, one in December and or January or is it going to be every other month? I know we had spoken about that, but maybe to put together a calendar so that they would could know in advance when the meetings are. Um, and then we could just uh, review that at our at our next meeting here also. Okay. Ms. Scott. Yes. Mm -hmm. Are you going to ask them what on what schedule they would like to meet or are you going to suggest a schedule? I thought we had already kind of come up with a schedule. I thought and that I would be um, and that we would be sharing that with them. So that's something to Think about do we want um, to uh, find out from them with a schedule? I thought we were going to be sharing with them a schedule um, and then getting, um, I guess, sort of RSVPs as to who can attend and what have you. What, what do what does the committee think? Do you all have a preference one way or, or over another? Well, um, I mean, I know the GTCAC and the CCAC meet monthly mm -hmm. um you know so 
but I, I mean, I, I want to make it so that people want to come and do come. Yeah. Yeah. But so those two advisory committees have been in existence long right. enough that the work that they do is is really sort of defined, even though it's not defined, but you know what I mean. Um, I I have a feel, just a sense that we might want to talk to this advisory group and see how they feel about it. And it also means so that we also um, are able to plan meaningful things when they come because we don't really know this is our beginning. This is our maiden voyage. So we have to sort of shape how we want to see it. We might end up at some point every month, but while we're still shaping, I would certainly think we would want to ask them and have that discussion because that would go to what is our purpose, our direction, et cetera. And the other factor is if if let's say we decided we were going to follow a monthly schedule, well, the next month is December and it's a very mm -hmm. busy month of people traveling, um, mm -hmm. the holiday break and um, people's minds sometimes are on other things other than education and school and things like that. So um, again, wanting to have the most attendance and the most, you know, active participation. Um, I'll just throw that out there. No, that's a that's a good point. So um, maybe that is something then that we bring up um, at our first meeting. Um, because I, in my mind, I envisioned every month, maybe it's every other month. Um, and, you know, maybe just sort of getting that sort of um, information, then we can work with um, staff and Tracy to make sure that our meetings don't overlap with any other meetings, board meetings, committee meetings, um, like you said, the gifted and talented meetings. So then we can get as many participants um, and, and, and as many people who would like to view it as possible. Yeah, so that, that's and just my, mm -hmm. And at the beginning, and it might change to that as we get busier and, and the committee gets really rolling. But in the beginning, I, I still say that we need to talk about what it is we want or direction for this committee because yes. we don't want to just do this committee all over again for our advisors. So we we want them to have the opportunity. That's what the other ones um, uh, do. They come up with their agenda, so to speak, and their issues and their directions. And then we get that information back or the offices get the information back and they have a broader view of what the advisory groups want. So they might end up, yes, and it might start out every other month while we're trying to get a direction and then it would end, might later on end up being every month. Okay, thank you for that. Cause I think, I know we had spoken before and we know that the, the, the budget is coming up and I know that our advisory stakeholders will want to um, comment on that. So this will be a great place where they can have that. I would say that would be our agenda for this first council meeting. Um, and actually, I would also ask with next steps around that, um, Mr. Handy, um, if it would be possible to invite um, Dr. Williams to come so that he can hear that, uh, get that information, um, you know, at our first meeting and, and then um, have that. W would that be a possibility? Or I guess you all could follow up and see if that would be a possibility based on his schedule. I'll I'll say yes, and um, I would work with my chief, Dr. Yarbrough. So she's and Dr. Yarbrough. Yes, she's willing to me. help me. Yeah, but I will certainly <laughs> I'll certainly initiate the. I'll, I'll take that Absolutely. ticket. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Yarbrough. Okay. Perfect then. Um, and, and that was my suggestion. Um, the uh, the committee. Did you all have feel one way or another about that, or? What about Dr. Williams coming? Yes. Oh, sure. I think that would be a great idea. Okay, great. All right. Any other suggestions for our next upcoming um, meeting, which would be November 18th? 
Anything that we need to circle back on or um, review? Okay. I can I ask, I want to ask Dr. Mr. Handy and uh, Dr. Yabro, and I'm going to say this probably every meeting. You want to read my mind, Mr. Handy? Okay, so I don't care, <clears throat> is, is it Fisher or whoever it is, but I'm telling you, it's looming out there. There is no way, no way now in the world of Blueprint for Maryland's future can you escape me and the ghost of Arnold Potler. <laughs> it, it's just not going to happen. If we can't talk CTE, there's a big old section in Blueprint for Progress for, progress, for Maryland's uh, future. We're going to be jammed up. The, the, the vacuous nature on this side, and I know it's in Dr. Williams' head, we could not leave Scott's Branch Elementary without him looking at the old Ollie's and saying, hmm, wouldn't that? So I just want to throw that out, and I'm going to keep throwing it out. Yes, I am. So at some point, especially while we are developing our plan to turn in, and I keep saying this, June of 2022, we might as well start getting serious about that CTE center on the west side of Baltimore County. Okay. Miss Scott, can I piggyback on what Ms. Pasteur just said? Yes, Ms. Mack. Um, just to say that she mentioned CTE and it triggered in my mind that last week, um, Mr. Thomas, Ms. Hen and I went to the food truck at um, Sellers Point and Dundalk and I was so impressed, just so impressed. And I was pleased, Ms. Pasteur, you'll be pleased to hear that the intent of the food truck is not to just reside with Dundalk and Sollers, but to go to all of the schools where they have a CTE program of food preparation and you, you know, give those students an opportunity. And then they're, they were looking for where they can use the food truck that doesn't violate existing agreements with rec and parks and like other people who provide food but it was really a great opportunity dr mccomas was there miss shay um just a wonderful wonderful opportunity and i was really pleased to hear that we are going to be spreading the wealth with that food truck so mr handy Wonderful. If we piggyback on what Ms. Mack just said, that they will be going to other schools that have food preparation programs, which side of the county will they still be on? <laughs> and that's, I mean, we're just going to make that rhetorical, okay? Mm -hmm. So until it happens over here, they'll still be over there. I just well, love that. And you well, know, there's a school over here that has. Uh, Western Ooh. Tech preparation program. Oh, yeah, Western yes. Tech. Western Tech. Okay. And Western Tech is is in its own bubble. Okay. We do not have the children from Western Tech coming out into the world. And 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 everybody, Western Tech is in its own beautiful people world. So I, I never count Western Tech when I had this conversation. Oh, and okay. all Potler, may he rest in peace, didn't either. Okay, there's, I'm sure, plenty of opportunities to go around and, you know, that just because it's in one area doesn't mean that it doesn't need to be in, a, in, a, in another area. But I'm, I'm proud of all of our students that are um, a part of the um, food preparation services. And I've had the opportunity to visit Western Tech and also to visit Solace Point. I didn't make it out to the to the food truck, but I'm glad well, you all were there. the food was good and it was plentiful. I, I think I saw some pictures that looked good. For lunch. <laughs> and I came out of Carver, so I'm good with all of that. And it's also wonderful, wonderful that all of our children who would like to participate need to have that opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. That's, all That's saying. why we're here to give children opportunities. That's so. Right. Right. Did anybody else have any um anything they'd like to add or would like to see on um our next committee meeting? Um actually Miss Miss Scott to yep. Miss Pastor's point, and I know we did this in curriculum, so I believe that it is readily available, but it might be interesting 
for the team to look at what CTE is available where, just to have the visual, just as a reminder about what our baseline is and where we want to go. So what CT is available and where is it available? Exactly. Uh, Countywide. Yes, Ms. and Ms. I would she also like to hear. Um, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Ms. Mack was, was still, still uh, speaking. Go ahead, Ms. Mack. I had a conversation with someone, but I cannot remember who it was just recently about how some of the limits that are put on students to attend CTE, kind of like with our magnet schools, you go to your zoned high school and you get, you know, you get taken, I'm sorry, middle school at least, high schools, I think kids are required mm -hmm. to get themselves there, but that there are some limits about how kids can access various CTE programs and I would like mm -hmm. to understand number one where everything is and number two what those limits are and what we would need to advocate for as a committee to overcome those limits to barriers access. that's what we talked about barriers yes if barriers exist what are we doing to overcome those barriers is it what, a bus? what are the barriers is it, what is it is it a administrator what is it that is preventing that Okay, or is it um, like Ms. Pastor was saying, distance? Is, 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 I, is, I don't is it know. basically I, again, distance? I can't even remember who told me, but I, I it just popped okay. into my head. Yes, Ms. Um, excuse me, Mr. Thomas. Sorry, were you done, Ms. Mack? Yes, I am. Okay, thank you, Mr. Thomas. Thank you, Ms. Um, something that I'd like to see is kind of going on to CTE and magnet purchase well is, uh, you know, maybe data on like which types of students are going to our magnet schools and going into magnet programs from middle school and which types of students aren't. Maybe seeing the ways that we can kind of encourage the students that currently maybe aren't predominantly in magnet programs to get involved in those magnet programs. I visited um, Overly High School last week and I was talking to the students about their magnet program and uh, kind of the disparities between students in the magnet program at their school and the students that are in the magnet in the magnet program at their school. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, kinda, I think it'd be really interesting if we could see that data on who's actually in the magnet programs, who's taking the benefit from those magnet programs and how can we bring more students to, to, to kind of take that benefit? I think that's excellent. Um, and I would ask, um, oh, I'm sorry, Ms. Pastor, did you have uh, uh, something to say? OK, I thought I heard Ms. Pastor. Um, so I would say that as far as um, that goes, that those things are, are very important. And to get a breakdown of that, I think would be very useful for us as a committee to one, know um, what's out there and then to come up with a plan to break down those barriers so that all of our students who would like to be in magnet programs or in magnet schools can do so. Um, my question would be is, uh, Dr. Yarborough, I didn't know if you all had had the opportunity to look at the um, equity audit that was done. It, it is on our website and it's um, on the board page and it was done last year. And I don't know, the data might be different now, but if there was a benchmark or there was some information on there about our magnet programs and it broke down based on location, sex, and race. I cannot um, remember off the top of my head. But if, it is, if that is there, then that would, that would be great to, um, to have that information pulled out. And if we don't have it there, we can work with our partners across divisions to um, obtain it for either the next meeting or the upcoming one right after there. Perfect. You know, it would be great though, even if it is there, to still get that because that was done last year. So after COVID and everything, um, maybe to look at how did it did it change? Was it on an upward trajectory, or did it maintain, or or what happened? I think that would that would be excellent to do a, a comparison because. Um, that I would be interested with the kind of year that we've been through and everything that would definitely help give us an idea of, of where things are going. Perfect. Hopefully we haven't over overloaded with too much for our next agenda. All right. Any other questions or, or comments from the committee? Any further business? Okay. All right, great. Thank you all so much for your time. I, I think this is wonderful and I look forward to everything. So um, since there's no further business, the meeting is now adjourned. Thank you and I hope you all, hope you all have a great day.
Have a Bye. good evening yeah. and rest of the week, everyone. Bye. You too. Thanks. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.